What is going on, everybody? Welcome into Fantasy Alarms MLB DFS oh, Game Day Playbook. I'm Howard Bender. With me here, of course, Henry Wilson. And oh, baby, a little preview of Friday night's big old slate. Super excited about that. Henry, you're actually on the playbook for Friday slate. So uh, how are you feeling right now? I mean, aside from that ugly ass hat you wear. Yeah, I am stoked. It's going to be great. Like we get Paul Skeen's day pitching in the afternoon and then a 13 game slate in the evening. Like, <laughs> would it be better for a Friday? It's going to be awesome. It better be awesome. <laughs> it better be awesome. Um, all right. Well, I mean, if, 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 I, if you're feeling good, you've probably already been diving in. Of course, we're recording this the uh, on, on Thursday night. Games are going on right now, but not a whole lot. It was a very short slate. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, appreciate you guys logging in here and, uh, and viewing us. Uh, we'd appreciate it even more if you hit the like button, uh, and even more so if you hit that subscribe button, it's a nice little free way to show that you're supporting the fantasy alarm family and the work that, uh, that we bring to the table here. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's just dive right in, Henry. we got a lot of action to go. Let me pull up my, uh, my old computer here. And there we have it right now, Henry, looking at uh, at, at the, the pitching slate here. Freddie Peralta up top, uh, Tariq Skubal, no, uh, Nestor, Cortez, Nestor Cortez, so expensive there against the White Sox at 9,400. You got Reagans at, at 92, and then Bryce Miller uh, rounding out that top group in the, uh, the 9,000 range. If you're paying up, Henry, who do you like? Uh, yeah, I think there's a clear number one choice for me here. I like a lot of these guys, like talented pitchers, but Tariq Skubal is the clear number one here, I think. I just think that he is so awesome. I know the Arizona Diamondbacks are like a tough matchup. I get that. But mm -hmm. Tariq Skubal is amazing. We just saw him put up 12 strikeouts against the Yankees. And then he faced the Astros, put up another seven strikeouts. And like the upside of him is always just so high. And he's so talented that if I pay him up the 10K, that's who I want. You know, it's kind of funny, you know, I've been talking about how I have to stop betting on the Arizona Diamondbacks. You know, you look at their numbers against righties, they're against lefties. They look amazing, but I just watched them. I was, uh, I was kind of banking on some runs being scored in that game against Cincinnati, where they were going up against Andrew Abbott. And listen, I know that Abbott, you know, has some, you know, good qualities about him, but I still thought that Arizona was going to dominate. So, you know, using Scooble in this one here, I guess I'm, uh, I'm not going to be so scared off, or should I just do the opposite, Henry? Because then I'll be like, oh, they can't hit lefties either, and then I'm screwed. Uh, no, again, I, they can hit lefties. I do think they can. But Tariq Skubal is not your ordinary lefty. Like, okay. this guy is a next level. This is an ace. So, you know, I really don't care that they hit lefties better and are going to be a better offense. I don't think it matters. I think he's going to shut them down anyway. <laughs> All right, so well, obviously then, then uh, when we start building that lineup, Tariq Skubal is going to be a name that we're going to probably want to lock in here. Uh, so then it comes down to paying down for our second pitcher. Do we hang out in the mid-tier? Do you like Max Freed? I don't think anybody really likes Tristan McKenzie at 8,700. That blows my mind. Uh, Paxton, Harrison, uh, Scott, uh, you know, and Christian Scott, a lot of people like Christian Scott. It is a nice matchup against Miami. Can he do it again? Yeah, I, I like Christian Scott. I think if I'm living in the middle tiers, middle tier here, I'm willing to take a shot on him. We just saw him throw six innings against Atlanta. I gave up three earned runs, sure, but eight strikeouts. I again for his second start to do that against Atlanta is huge. And now he gets to go face Miami. We know the talent is legit with him and he's already showing the results. I'm totally happy to jump back into Christian Scott at this price here against the Marlins. Yeah. Back to back, back to back quality starts. Uh, definitely. And, and fighting for that spot in the rotation too. You know, they're going to get a couple of guys back. I mean, I know once Kodai Senga comes back, He's got a rotation spot, but you know, that back end of that rotation is not that, not that sturdy. So Scott definitely pitching, uh, for one of them there. So yeah, I, I like that as much as I hate, I mean, I don't like facing Lizardo cause I think Lizardo can dominate the Mets and their putrid lineup here, but I don't know. I don't know, man. Are you, are you into Scott here? Is there another pitcher that you like? You want to try out John means again, get that strikeout upside against Seattle. 
Yeah, I think John Means is a potential there. Obviously, Seattle always gives you a strikeout upside. Um, but uh, honestly, I think if I'm not going Christian Scott here, it's because I am going to their side of the game, and I'm going to Jesus Lazardo. Because uh, Mets haven't been a great offense, and look, Lazardo was great in his, his first game back. He struck out eight against the Phillies, who are one of the hottest offenses in baseball right now. And we know that this guy can be a, like – pitcher that could be worth 9k 10k like he has that kind of upside um and so when he came in and threw almost six innings and eight strikeouts in that first uh outing back yeah i'm ready to jump back in here yeah yeah i mean you look at the the raw numbers and everybody's like oh well, those those are terrible uh yeah i mean listen back-to-back -back starts against the yankees and the braves i mean come on <laughs> before going on the injured list too right so like right? he was hurt like I, i'm okay i'm ready i i'll throw that away i don't mind all right, beautiful. Lizardo there down at 74. I think that's a great price as well. Um, looking further there, uh, you know, Simeon Woods Richardson, I'm not going to hate on this dude, right? He's performed exceptionally well. Um, I think he does a, a, a really nice job. I mean, he got rocked against Toronto in Toronto, but, you know, prior to that, he had been pitching real, real well. Yeah, no, he's been pitching good. Obviously, we saw the eight strikeouts against Seattle, but like I might be able to go get eight strikeouts against Seattle these days. Oh, <laughs> so, not really. Could you? Could you? No, no not, a, not at all. all but right. my point stands of that, I think that eight strikeouts there is a bit of a you know one-time thing. I don't think he's a great strikeout upside guy. I don't think you should be expecting that again anytime soon out of him. Um, so again, it's cheap, you know, Cleveland is a little scary though. Like they're a good offense. And again, I just don't think he really does have that strike at upside. So I'm not super sold. Okay. Did we miss anybody in here that you, uh, that you particularly like? Uh, you know, I'm gonna just give one little shout out to Andrew Heaney of like, if you really, really have to save money here and want to live at the bottom end, he's the only one that I could reasonably go for. Like, obviously, the Colorado offense is terrible that he just went after and put out eight strikeouts. And before that, he got to face Oakland. And so, obviously, survived that. Like, those are easy matchups. But the Angels, you know, aren't that great either. They hit lefties <laughs> better also. So, like, there is that. But I just think Heaney provides a strikeout upside. And so, for that cheap, if you want to throw a dart, I think he provides something. Okay. All right. Well, we'll uh, we'll take a look at some lineups uh, during the the live stream at uh, at four p.m. Eastern time. So uh, we'll check in with that. But I guess for right now, here we're gonna end up. Uh, well, we're gonna just we're just gonna drop Lazardo's name in there. I think that's what you want to do anyway. And well, you're on the playbook, so I should be just sitting and listening to you. Talk to me here about backstops again. This is a spot there where John and I like to pay down. Uh, you know, a bunch. Where are you at with the catcher position? Uh, do you feel like paying up for one of these top guys? Uh, or do you want to get some uh, some value but a little further down? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm usually with you if I want to pay down here too. I think if I am paying up, I'm probably going for that mid-tier of like Jonah Heim against a lefty. He just he hits lefties super well. So the matchup against Tyler Anderson, um, I like. I really like the Rangers lineup as a whole there. Um, and Heim just crushes lefties. So like if I'm paying up, I'm going to be around there and probably go Jonah Heim. But most likely, I'm just going to find a cheaper option. Okay. All right. Well, I mean – as we go down the uh, as we go down the list, and it is uh, it is quite a list to go down. Um, I'll just I'll always shout out Ivan Herrera. I think that you know John and I talk about him a ton. Um, last ten games, he's been super productive. Um, you know, the, the the on base percentage is absolutely fantastic, and he's always dirt cheap. You know, this is like the Yanar Diaz play that we always you know hit when we rode in the beginning, and Herrera, I think. A blessing in disguise, I think, for uh, for St. Louis. Because I think Herrera is a better catcher than Wilson Contreras. He doesn't hit with the same consistency. Well, we haven't seen him hit with the same consistency that Wilson Contreras does. But Wilson Contreras is a terrible pitch framer. Uh, he doesn't call a great game. And uh, and I think that the, you know, the Cardinals are going to suffer at the hands of that. But Yvonne Herrera seems to be getting along all hunky-dory with everybody yeah. else over there. Yeah, I've really been liking her recently, too. Also, how about Gary Sanchez with almost 1,000 OPS over the last 10 games and facing Hunter Brown, who we've seen get blown up multiple times oh. this year. So, I that mean... Hurts that hurts me so much. 
Yeah, but it's the truth. <laughs> so much, so much talent. So much talent. I know. I just can't harness it. Yep. Crushes my soul. <laughs> Gary Sanchez at 37. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Fine. I like looking now even deep. You know, Mike Clevenger making his, I believe it's his, his Clevenger's first start of the season coming against the Yankees. I wouldn't mind slapping a little Jose Trevino in there. He's been hitting the ball uh, real, real well. So if you're, if you're powering down like that, uh, you know, and then, uh, you know, Alejandro Kirk, if you want to go up against Tyler Alexander, I don't hate that play uh, as well. Totally. I also like Ben Rortvert. Rortvert. How do you say his name? Do you have any idea how to say his name? Rortvert. 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 Yeah. Ben Rortvert. Uh, but Chris Bassett's terrible against lefties. Uh, I think I think he's a good hitter here, too, as a catcher. He's been, uh, you know, just steady producing at the plate. So I don't mind this because Chris Bassett just can't get lefties out. <laughs> no, he cannot. He's terrible with that. All right. So we know we're, we're paying down. We're looking in this area here. Uh, Rortvert, uh, who is the least expensive guy that we mentioned? I think the least expensive was Trevino. At yeah, 31. probably Trevino. Jeez. I think we can't get a little further mm -hmm. down here. Is there anybody? All right. We'll just put Trevino oh, in no. just for the time being. We'll just leave him there. And we'll just see. We'll just see. Let's go to the first base position here. Um, you know, Frankie Montas, you know, who's who's definitely cooled down from where he started the season. Um, but just take it on these lefties. Um, it's in LA, so it's not as tragic of a ballpark for them. But Otani Freeman, I, I don't really know how you don't go after them. Spencer Steer priced up here going up against the lefty in Paxton to get a little something coming back the other way. Uh, who do you like it uh, at first? Oh, man. I, yeah, all of them. I, again, yeah, those Dodgers against Montas. I also love Josh Naylor here. I already you know, gave my Woods Richardson doubts a little bit, but Josh Naylor's just been so good. Like, it seems kind of crazy that you would, you know, pay this high for someone this close to those Dodgers guys, but, like, he has been almost as good as them, and I think it's another good matchup for him here. Okay. All right. Uh, look at in the, uh, in the mid tier areas here, if we're going to use Scooble, we're not even going to look at Christian Walker. Damn it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> who did by the way, Homer off of Andrew Abbott. I of course played the, uh, the kettle Marte prop. Uh, and I, and I shunned the Christian Walker one stupidly. So, uh, nevertheless here, Vladimir Guerrero under five K here. Uh, Cronenworth, I don't know how you feel about him against the lefty and Max Freed, but you know, I, I know you were touting him uh, a few games ago and I was definitely in on that one there as well. Yeah. You know, I've been in on Cronenworth, but against the lefty for 4,800, I think is a little too much for me. All right. So show me where you want to go. Tell me where you want to go. Uh, you know, I like just a little lower there, old Anthony Rizzo. You know, we already talked about those Yankees oh, against Clevenger. I think Rizzo's been having a good bat. Um, so I'm going to, you know, speak to you for the Yankees a little bit here. But I, I like this price for Anthony Rizzo. I appreciate that nod. I definitely do. All right. Rizzo against Clevenger. We can definitely rock that at 4,200. Uh, Yandy Diaz has been crazy hot right now. Um, yeah. Like really, really like three home runs in his last seven games, something like that. Yandy Diaz, where is that? Where, where, why don't I just pick up the numbers here uh, and look at what's going on? I mean, spectacular, right? They got that 0 for 5 in there. Sure. Everything else is mixed with all of these multi-hit games, throwing some power down there. So good yep. solid numbers here for Yandy Diaz. Yeah, and 3900 for Yanni Diaz, like, because, again, he's been slumping, so this price is real low, but he's not slumping anymore. And, yeah, I like the raise against Chris Bassett, so totally willing to take that price and go in on Yanni Diaz. Uh, John would never forgive me if I didn't mention Lamonte Wade. Left yep, me back going up against Ryan Feltner. I don't particularly I'm, – I'm never going to use it <laughs> unless, unless there is, like, you know, unless I'm, like, stacking – Giants hitters in Coors Field <laughs> with like me on the mound for the Rockies. Like then I'll look at Lamonte Wade, but he always loves paying down to or talking about paying down to Lamonte Wade. I couldn't do it. I'd rather just pay down to Carlos Santana, who's actually another guy who's been hitting the ball real well. Look at these numbers: two seventy three with three home runs 
eight RBI, uh, and, uh, you know, over the, uh, over the last 10 games for him, five runs scored, you know, doesn't matter that his OBP is only three fourteen. He's putting up productive numbers, three home runs, eight RBI for the price tag. I can't hate on it. No, not at all. Uh, I also like the guy right in between those two is in Candelario uh, against Paxton. I don't, really trust Paxton all that much and Candelaro hits lefties pretty well. Um, so, you know, Red's offense has been a little disappointing, but Candelario's, you know, been producing and I just trust him against lefties pretty much always. Hits in five straight games, three doubles, five RBI. It's production. That's, that's what we're looking for. Listen, you know, that's why, I mean, I always like looking at, you know, at, at players game logs just to see, where they are in a groove, you know, like if I'm mm-hmm. building a DFS lineup, I don't necessarily want to go to a guy, unless it's like a killer matchup. I don't want to go to a guy who's like, Oh, for his last 16. Yeah. And who the hell wants that? Uh, you know, I'll use the old Jim Bowden phrase. I like to ride hot guys. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> He's actually said that on air multiple times, <laughs> multiple times. Um, all right, so we'll come back to first base. We'll just uh, we'll take a look at it there, but I don't think there's anything further down that there's nothing further down that I want to go to here. No, probably not. <laughs> okay. Beautiful. To second base we go. Jose Altuve. Uh, obviously, you know it's a tougher matchup against Peralta, so I don't know if I would want to pay up. I like what some of these Houston bats have been doing lately, but I don't necessarily know if I want to go over there. Uh, Marcus Simeon against a lefty in Tyler Anderson. That is definitely a spot that I want to go to. Um, and then, uh, you know, I can, I can get on board with you, uh, with your, uh, you know, with Andres Jimenez going up against Woods Richardson. Yeah. You know, I, I, if you're going to those Cleveland bats, I would go with that. I think the clear one that sticks out is that Simeon just gets, yeah, obviously a two I don't really want to go Houston against Peralta. I'm not going against Scooble. Uh, and Ozzy Albies, even against Waldron, like, I don't love hitting guys against Matt Waldron just because, like, the knuckle bar baller, like, who, maybe mm-hmm. they'll crush him, but maybe they won't. I just, I don't like the volatility there. Um, so yeah, Simeon and Jimenez at the top are definitely the two that stick out the most to me. Beautiful. Uh, lefty Bryce Terang going up against Hunter Brown. That's a, a nice, yep. tasty matchup. I mean, you know, we're going to probably spill out a, a ton of Milwaukee lefty bats. Oh yeah. <laughs> right. Like all of a sudden, all of a sudden everybody knows who Sal Frelick is because yeah, the lefty bats finally woke up. Thanks for the uh, return of Christian Yelich. So uh, Terang, I think is in a good spot here. Who else do you like down here further? Uh, Rengifo against the lefty. Um, it's like clockwork here. I know you like Heaney, but Rengifo against Rengifo. Sorry, my bad. Rengifo <laughs> against, uh, against the lefty. I mean, that's uh that's like an, almost a no brainer. Oh yeah, like I said, I, I gave my props to Heaney as a as a dart throw. But if you're not playing him, like again, you're not stacking Angels bats. But yeah, Renhifo has been absurd against lefties. So like, you're not starting him against a righty, but here against the lefty for this cheap, like yeah, go for it. <laughs> well, forty four hundred, not really oh, yeah, that not cheap, cheap, but he's been so good against lefties. Yeah, that, that's okay. <laughs> it's in our price range. If you look yeah. at what our budget is here, left over still. He's in our price range, so we, we like that. Uh, anybody further down, do you want to uh, take a look at Bogey at all? Do you want to look at Estrada going up against Feltner? Uh, oh, I'm going to name my second Yankee of the day. Why not really? go for those? Why not go for Glaber Torres? It was starting to hit a better bat and facing Clevenger. You're making me nervous with all this Yankee talk. I got to be honest with you, but you're right. Four ga- four Four games straight with a hit. Two multi-hit games, two doubles the last one, one home run. Yeah. Here's the thing. This is a win-win for me because if I'm right and these Yankees do great, great. I was right. If I was wrong, the Yankees did poorly, so I still win. So- <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that right now, Henry. I don't know if you deserve Gleyber Torres' scare, stare right now. All right. Okay. Nolan Gorman against Brayon Bayo. I'm just kidding. <laughs> And I, I, I like Nolan Gorman. He's someone I've gone to quite a bit, but he just, I don't know. He hasn't been really producing. At least any days that I go to him, it feels like he's done nothing. So he's kind of on a don't playlist for me for a minute. <laughs> Always hits a home run when you don't need him to. Yeah. Uh, further down, I know you like Gavin Lux's lefty bat going up against Frankie Montas, don't you? 
Yeah, I do. I, maybe this used to be similar where I keep going to Gavin Lux and he's like not producing a lot of the time, but he's still producing some and this is a great matchup. So it's a cheap way to get a part of that Dodgers lineup. It, you know, it's not a bad option still, even though he hasn't been hitting that great. <laughs> no, no, no. That big triple the other night, though, that was fun to watch. I always love when guys hit triples. Oh, it's so yeah. much fun watching them tearing around the bases. Um, all right, so that's uh, that's down below here. I don't necessarily see anybody of uh, any value. I mean, you could go Vaughn Grissom, but he's just been terrible, even though it's going up against Kyle Gibson, who is, I mean, let's face facts. We should probably definitely look at some Boston bats here against Kyle Gibson. I don't know if Vaughn Grissom is where I want to go, though. Oh, yeah, I'm definitely looking at Boston bats against Kyle Gibson. Don't trust Kyle Gibson at all, but I'm not – using Von Grissom again until he has an extra base hit. Like, <laughs> cause he hasn't had one of those in a long time. Uh, I think he has one so far this season. And so now nah, I am not willing to do it yet. I think he'll come around still, but we'll see. <laughs> okay. All right. Well then let's go to third base then. And I guess third base, I mean, do we want to pay up for a Jose Ramirez? Do we want to pay up for a Machado, a lefty Max Muncie or do we just gonna go with the lefty Rafael Devers against Kyle Gibson? Yeah, that's the main Boston bat I'm targeting today. Rafi Devers is red hot right now. He's hit another homer today, uh, and against Kyle Gibson, yeah, like it's not like I dislike those other guys up at the top. When I can get Devers for 5K here, yeah, that uh, just seems too easy. Definitely, definitely. So the pay up there to uh, to Devers, I'm in there uh, with you. Uh, middle tier here. Dude, Alex Bregman. Yes, it's against Peralta, but like, who the hell woke up Alex Bregman finally? He went hitless the other day, uh, but look at this, you know, a little like hit streak that he went on. He was powered up with some RBI totals, some three home runs in the last three games. Do you do, do, do you look to, to Bregman and, and this Houston lineup as like a contrarian move against the Freddie Peralta? I don't think so. Uh, again, I, I believe in Bregman. I he, I wrote him up yesterday, and he did go over three. And I'm not holding that against him. Uh, I it, no, I'm not holding that against him. I still think he's going to be someone you can go to here in the future. But the price jumped up to 4500 And against Freddie Peralta, it's just tough because Freddie Peralta is so good. All right. Well, here we go. Renjifo again is a possibility at third base. Um, anything further down, like I'm having, I have, you know, obvious trust issues with Arenado. Um, I need Jake Berger to, to, to turn himself around. Matt Chapman, uh, kind of gets a little sink or swim. Anybody in this tier that, you know, you, uh, you're drawn to at all. Yeah. Honestly, for the most part, it's the guys that we already talked about. It's the Renjifo, it's the Candelario. Like those are the guys that, you know, we've already hit them at other positions that I like as these cheaper options because I'm kind of with you. A lot of the rest of them, I just not really loving. Yeah. I mean, I know Willie Castro's done well and, and you know, and Pemba's been a, a big fan of his, but we're not going to use Suarez. Josh Smith against the lefty doesn't dazzle me. Like you said, no. there's Candelario. Um. All right. Yeah, I am. Uh, I'm perfectly fine moving on from uh, from third base. Taking a look at the shortstop position. I mean, Bobby Witt, 65. Mookie at 62. Elliot, 61. I mean, that is uh, that is a lot of salary. Uh, are you paying up at shortstop? Uh, I mean, I could. I definitely could. Like, there's so many places I want my money to go. The like, the odds of me being able to afford one of these 6K guys, I feel like, is low. <laughs> like, there's just so many other guys I want in like the 5K tier, you know, too, and stuff. Like, to fit these guys is difficult. But I mean, all of them are really good options. Uh, especially, I think the top two are my favorites. You know, Bobby Witt and Mookie Betts are just next level hitters, and they have great matchups. But yeah, they're tough to afford. All right. Uh, Gunnar Henderson, I love him, even against Bryce Miller. Uh, Corey Seager against the lefty, I'm less interested in. Uh, Willie Adamas against Hunter Brown, yeah, sure, but if it were at a home game where Willie loves that batter's eye in Milwaukee, then I'd be uh, kind of into that, which yeah. brings me to your boy, Anthony Volpe, because I know you're going to just, you just want to stack Yankees against Clevenger, and I don't hate you for it. Yeah, Volpe has been awesome, man. He is thriving in that leadoff spot. Like the power is there. He is just getting hits. I yeah, I hate talking up another Yankee, but 
So, yeah, I like Adamas too, but if it was at home and also like the 5K price tag, it's like the biggest we've seen from him yet this season. And when you can go 200 cheaper for Volpe, who's been amazing. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, it's a pretty home, good Homer again on Thursday. Yeah, he's been awesome. Yeah, so good. So good. Should we just stare at him and be like, wow, he's incredibly <laughs> handsome. And his numbers over these last 10 games are absolutely fantastic. Yeah. Absolutely fantastic. I I might dude, I might have to just drop him in there at short. I don't yeah. know. I don't want to do it just yet, about it. I like but that. I might have to. I yeah. might just have to. Um <laughs> back to the shorts up. So anyway, other guys then uh Jeremy Pena against Peralta. I'm not really that interested in. I don't want to use Lindor against Lazardo. No. Bobachet needs to get his head out of his ass. Uh Hassan Kim against the lefty. Uh, yeah, I could do it. I think, uh, you know, there's, it's a cheap price. Yeah, Kai Sunkin's been so bad. I, I just said I could do it, but I don't know if I can do it. I guess he's been really bad, good right? Lefty. Like, I know this is cheap for him, but man, he's been bad. Yeah. So, no, I take it back. I can't do it. Okay, beautiful. Uh, Caballero, there's no power there. He does, no. you know, the occasional stolen base, which is nice. So uh, far, to- it's outside of Coors, but, like, he's been hitting really well lately. Yeah. You dig in on Tovar here. Yeah. Okay. Hits in. Ooh, look at that. Look at that streak he's got going. Yeah, One, no, two, he's three, hitting five, what? It's, five, it's, six, seven, eight. Nine game hit streak right now. Multi hit performances, doubles. And a homer. And runs. All not in course, too. Like, so. It's yeah, impressive. I, I can all see right. that for him against the lefty, which I like Kyle Harrison a bit, too. Like, I think he does have talent, and especially against Colorado. Like, he could do something in this matchup. But as a little one-off, if you're not on him, like, I like Tovar. Okay, beautiful. Um, do we have any interest uh, further down at all? Mason Wynn leading off against Bayo. <sighs> No, I could you, I could maybe go you know like Carlos Correa against McKenzie at thirty nine hundred. Okay, but like I don't like anyone below that. I don't. Yeah. Well, then to the outfield we go, Henry. Right. Um, I mean, listen, we'll see. Maybe something will open up tomorrow, value wise. Yeah. We'll check that out over at the the other live stream uh, at four p.m. Eastern. But for now, listen, I have no problem just saying you know what I don't like the value down there at the bottom at shortstop. So. Let's hit that outfield and, uh, yeah, I mean, obviously give your favorites besides Soto and Judge. I know you're going to want to lock those guys in. I don't know if we're going to afford it, but we want them. Yeah, uh, yeah, obviously Soto and Judge, they're going to round out my Yankee love today, I guess, against Clevenger. Uh, and Kyle Tucker, too, I've been take, talking that, like, I don't want to do the Houston guys against Peralta. Tucker's the exception of, like, if you can afford him and you want to go there, he's just been absurd that, I, you know, even against Peralta – like I could see taking the chance on Kyle Tucker because he's been out of this world recently. Yeah. Five home runs, eight RBI, seven runs scored in a stolen base over his last 10 games. That is always, always money in the bank. I love that. Uh, 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 over a thousand OPS for the season. Yeah. Look at that. There you go. Yeah. Just getting over that edge. My boy. Yeah. I you like know, it. Has over a thousand OPS on the season, though. Christian Yelich going against Hunter Brown. Boom. Yeah, multi multi hit games in four of his last five games. Uh, plenty of extra base hits. Like just producing. Great matchup. He's awesome. I love when Christian Yelich is hitting well, and he is in fact hitting well. <laughs> he sure is. All right, I'll just put him in there just because I guess you know. We see we're get we're getting close here though we're getting we're wow. getting close to Lamonte to to Lamonte Wade at first base close here so yeah. we gotta be careful. <laughs> well, let's hope we can find some outfield de- deals here too. Then <laughs> um, middle tier here, uh, we, we're not in on Ozuna. I mean, Ozuna's great, but against the knuckleballer, no. um, always kind of a question. Tyler O'Neill against uh, Kyle Gibson, I think that's an easy one there. Um, as well, Spencer Steer against Paxton. Um, where do you where do you do you like anything in the middle tier here? You know, a lot of these like these low five guys. I feel like I you know I'd rather find a way to spend up at the higher ones or just drop down into that four K range. That's kind of where I'm I'm at today. Beautiful. And then who's in that four K range that you uh, that you're digging on? We you know we talk about the 
Twins lefty bats going up against uh, Tristan McKenzie is probably going to be a nice spot. You got guys like Kepler, uh, you know, Trevor Larnock. Yeah, Kepler's been awesome. So absolutely willing to go get him against McKenzie. I, I'll take another Boston bat there and Jaron Duran against Kyle Gibson. Okay. Uh, I think that's an easy place to go to. And, you know, maybe just stack another Yankee and throw Stanton in there also. Like, <laughs> there. We can't afford it. No, we can't. We can't. We, can't. I mean, we might be able to. We're at 38. We need like one. We need one like really good pay down. Yeah. Like one, like, you know, give me like a, you know, again, like we go like a $2,400 player uh, if we can. We'll probably find something in the outfield. We'll take a look, for, you know, a little further there. Um, moving through all these IL guys, you did say Stanton over there. Uh, I don't really want to go target against Reagan's, but Brent Rooker's been absolutely fantastic. A Rose Arena's woken up a little bit. Yeah. I don't know if I can trust it at 4,400. Yeah, it's not cheap, that's for sure. But against Bassett, like I said, I like stacking Rays. So, like, I think I'm not doing it as a one off with the Rose Arena, but if I'm stacking, I'm willing to put him in it. Beautiful. All right. A little further down. Lefty bat Jake Bowers against Hunter Brown. It's another one we're talking about there. Absolutely. He has right. been great lately, too. I just keep naming all the guys that John and Pembo always talks about. I mean, there's a reason he's talking about them. They're good. <laughs> uh, Ryan O'Hearn, the lefty bat against Bryce Miller. If you're interested in, you know, some O's work. Oh, he's been kind of cold lately, so I don't know if I want that. Larnack, here you go, against McKenzie. 4,200. Jeez yeah. Louise. It's, it's too much for me when you can go to the other Rays guy at the same price and Josh Lowe. Josh Lowe. has just been awesome since his return. Big, uh, think, big fan here. Big, yeah. big fan. Uh, what you don't see there is he hit another home run today, didn't he? I think, am, I, am I crazy about that? Am I making that up? I think he did. Uh, he's. I been, have him everywhere in season-long fantasy. I have yeah. him everywhere. Josh Lowe is so talented. He's the lefty bat that this Rays offense has been desperately missing. And again, Bassett is not good against lefties. So then you have a really good lefty bat that's still pretty cheap. Yeah, he's one of my favorite outfielders today. Damn. All right, let's tuck him in here. Let's tuck him in. And again, guys, Henry's going to be on the playbook tomorrow. He'll have that up in plenty of time for uh, for everything for uh, for you. And then, you know, obviously also... Uh, you know, get in on our discord over at fantasyalarm.com. Uh, if you, if you're in, you know, if you're a subscriber, well, then, you know, that's what you, you want to do. You want to, you know, then you want to jump into discord, uh, and make all that happen. If you're not a subscriber, well, allow me to do a shameless plug here and give you a little QR code and say, get in here, go to fantasyalarm.com slash win. Use the promo code. Let's go. We'll give you half off. Uh, of your first month and then jump in on the DFS work, the best bets, everything that we've got going on over at fantasy alarm. It's going to pay for your subscription right off the bat, right off the bat. So there you go. That's my, uh, my little salesy pitch here. Zap that QR code and get over to fantasyalarm.com slash win promo code. Let's go for 50% off your first month. All right. Looking further down. So I, I tucked in Josh Lowe there. Again, we're going to need to go find something super cheap here. Um, anybody around this 4, 4, 4K, 4100 end that you uh, that you particularly like? Well, I've given so much Yankee love. I need to keep giving a little more Red Sox love, too. Willie Abreu continues to just perform. Uh, he's been awesome. And again, like we talked about the good matchup. You want to get some Red Sox bats in there. Willie Abreu hitting at the top of this lineup has been great. Yeah, he really has. He really has. I'm not going to hate on that pick uh, at all. I think that uh, Abreu has been fantastic. Four grand, if you can afford it, make it happen. You know, I'm telling you, we're going to end up finding some third base and some second base, uh, you know, value. But I'm not going to put Abreu in just yet, even though I know you love him. Save some money. Save, yeah. save some money still. We only have one outfield spot left. All right. Well, there you go. Verdugo, lefty bat at 3,800. Can complete a Yankee stack if we like. Yep, absolutely. Um, Go there, and then uh, and then let's look further down. You know, one of the things, and, and I'll get your your take on this. John and I were kind of talking about it. These Cleveland bats, like outside of Jose Ramirez and Josh Naylor, like there's been production, but it's never been like 
eye-opening production where you're like, oh, I can really rely on this guy. So when I look at like a Will Brennan uh, over here, and I'm sure that we'll at some point find uh, Tyler Freeman's name pop up here somewhere. Oh, there he is. There he is. Like, I just, I can't do it, uh, you know, in that range. Yeah, most of that lineup, they're they're a better real life baseball team than they are a fantasy baseball team. Is the problem like they're out there winning games and they're going to keep doing that and they have enough production and depth that they're going to keep doing that. But a lot of those guys for fantasy value is just not really there. Yeah. Um, Sal Frelick has been hitting the ball very well. We're talking about the lefty bat. Um, he's had home runs in back to back games. Granted, it's against the Pittsburgh Pirates, but you know, not a terrible rotation there. No, absolutely. They've got pitching for sure. Their offense has been their problem. So, yeah. Two Easy. home runs, three RBI, and a stolen base in his last two games. Yeah, but think about? same price there. How about the last few games for Kevin Pillar? He's been <laughs> Dude, unreal, man. That, like, how old is this what? guy? There's no way this continues forever, right? But, like, maybe ride the hot streak. Because, like, this is – this has to be the best four game stretch of hitting in his career. And yeah, this guy's like what? 35. I don't even know how he's old. <laughs> um, he is old. I don't know his, uh, his exact age at a 35. glance. Do we yep. get it. He's 35, 35 years old. So yeah. I mean, listen, if you're <laughs> right, who's he facing? Who's he squared off against? Oh, your boy Heaney. Yeah. What a Kevin Pillar's, what are his career splits look like against lefties? I know you got it in front of you. Probably not great because he's not been a great hitter for most of his career. Uh, he is better against lefties, though. You know, he's actually league average against lefties. He's got a 105 career WRC plus against lefties. He's See, there you go. Hitting. That's that's like that's the, the money shot. He doesn't have to have been a great hitter in his past, but if he's hitting lefties better than he hits righties uh, overall – while yep. he's on a hot streak and yep. facing a lefty, I don't see why we don't do it there either. I like yeah. it. This hot streak's ridiculous. <laughs> yep, yep. Uh, Kirilov, lefty bat against McKenzie. Uh, I don't mind, you know, looking into that. Joe Adele, uh, has he, uh, he's kind of cooled down a little bit here from the, uh, the, the hot streak that he was on. A um, couple of misses in there, but Joe Adele. Uh, as a possibility here, you uh, you interested in him against the lefty? Uh, yeah, I would. Again, if I'm not in on Heaney, uh, trying to you know get that cheap option, uh, yeah, I think he's cooled down, so I'm not as excited about it. But he's still really cheap, and like we've seen the production now, so you know, absolutely, you can take a chance on him. All right, uh, scrolling down even further, you tell me if there's a name that catches your eye. If we can find anybody i don't think we're gonna find anybody that we really like under three grand yeah. or are we i hmm. i mean alec burleson has been hitting the ball really well recently and yeah. he's real cheap i you know going against uh, brian bayo who's had his struggles so far this season he's a decent cheap option here in a you know struggling cardinals lineup but he's there been producing go. Um, all right, but I don't think if I keep scrolling down, you're not yeah, gonna no, it, you're not you're not gonna hop on any of these guys' bandwagons, are you? I'm not having anybody stick out to me. No. Okay. Well, then that means that uh, you know, we can think about using one of these cheaper guys that we talked about here uh in the outfield, or we can go look for some value at second and third. I mean, yeah, I'd be I'd be happy to ride the Kevin Pilar hot streak. <laughs> Oh, look at that. You just you there it is. Uh, Pilar. Why Ooh, not? 36. Okay. It, it's gonna end. Okay. It, it's going to. It, it will end at some point. Maybe this I will be I will be here with you uh for that. Should we get Renjifo in there so we get like an extra Ooh. little mini stack there? Why not? Yep. Why not? 44. So now we got now we gotta find yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Renny if it wasn't super cheap though. No, he's not. Yeah, yeah, I just I I'm taking him out. Okay, okay. <laughs> we're back to second base because I know we're going to want to try and pay something for first, don't we? Wait, okay, you get your Yankee here. Glaber Torres is only 3,700. Glaber Torres only 3,700. All right. That's in our budget. That's in our budget. Still yep. need to save some money here, but you want to go Candelario here at thirty seven hundred? That'll that won't give us anything really at first base. 
Uh, is there is there a pay down here all the way at the bottom at third? There is not. Uh, Espinal, if he plays? Yeah. Like, what's Espinal? He's been uh, playing regularly. Look at it. One, two, three, four, five, six-game hit streak right now. He homered in a recent game. He's got a stolen base in there. Sure. You don't why like not? Paxton, do you? No, I don't. So, yeah, why not Santiago Espinal? I don't I, Yeah, I can't think of a reason why. Yeah, better than any other options that are around there. We got to save some money to get the rest of these guys we like. <laughs> so that leaves us 4800 for first base. Ooh, much better. That does not put us into a great um, spot yeah, here, into a great tier. Weird tier I don't like, though, because, like, again, here, I don't know, they go down to, like, Rizzo and put that money elsewhere. Okay, we could do that. That's a that's a that's a lot of Yankees in there. We sure we want to go with a full. Yeah, that is, well, okay, maybe go Jake Bowers then. Pair up Bowers with with Christian Yelich. Bowers and Yelich, couple of lefty sluggers there against Brown. All right, well there you go, uh, folks. A little bit of a of an example lineup there. Scooble, Lizardo, those are two of Henry's favorites. So you'll check that out in the playbook. Uh, we link, we're digging on some Yankees here. Trevino. Uh, behind the plate, Jake Bowers at first, kind of save a little bit. We've got 500 here to play around with, so this is not a final final, obviously. But we're getting some value here at Torres, value for Espinal. Volpe's been white hot. Yelich has been white hot. Je uh, you know, Josh Lowe has been white hot, as has Kevin Pillar. So in the realm of we like hot guys, <laughs> this is where we're going with our DFS lineup. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. All right. Henry, any final thoughts you want to uh you want to pitch us here on uh, before we get on out? No, just uh check out the playbook tomorrow, tune in tomorrow's show to get your the final thoughts, but it should be a really really fun exciting day. No doubt about it. Again, here's the QR code uh or you can just go to fantasyalarm.com/win. Use that promo code. Let's go for fifty percent off your first month. Uh, as always, Henry, an absolute blast to hang out with you. Appreciate it very much, and uh, we'll catch up with you, brother. Sounds good. All right, for Henry Wilson, I'm Howard Bender. This has been the uh, the Fancy Alarm MLB DFS live stream, and we'll catch you next time.